Time having arrived, I hereby call into order the uh, City Council Subcommittee of the Ordinance Committee for Wednesday, May 18th, 2019. It being uh, a little uh, about 610, I want to do a disclosure. We had a request um, to have this taped tonight. Uh, it is being taped live. Brockton Community Access Television is, is taping this and it's live as well. So um, it's very unusual for a subcommittee to have that. Uh, but people had uh, asked us to do that, and we, of course, uh, concurred with that. So it is, councillors, it is uh, on right now. I am going to go right into the agenda tonight, councillors. We have a few letters that have to be read into the record as well, but I will uh, open up the protocol. I'm Robert Sullivan, councillor at large. I serve as chairman of the Ordinance Committee. Timothy Cruz, Ward 1 councillor. Gene Bradley, Duraran Court is a councillor at large. Uh, Tom Monahan is from Ward 2, and uh, Winthrop Farwell is a concert lodge as well. The five of us sit on the, uh, the ordinance committee as appointed by the council president, Moises Rodriguez, who's here as well. We're also joined by uh, Jack Lally, councilor, and also Dennis Ianeri, the dean of the council and councilor from Ward 3. Thank you for being here tonight. Another elected official that's here is Mark Lindy, who's the, one of the Brockton representatives from Southeastern Regional. Thanks for being here tonight. <coughs> Councilors, with that being said, we're gonna go into the agenda, number one. Acceptance of the minutes of April 3, uh, 2019 Ordinance Committee meeting. I entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. The motion on the floor is properly second to accept the minutes for April 3, 2019. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, that motion carries. We'll reflect that in the minutes. Number two, Brockton United Ordinance. The purpose of this ordinance is, is to create unity among residents of Brockton, whether born here or abroad, to welcome newcomers and to engage community members in building trust and solidarity between the different ethnic groups that make up the city of Brockton and the city's government. It's a continued matter from ordinance me meeting of April 3, 2019. Invited to attend Mayor Bill Carpenter, Police Chief John Crowley, City Solicitor Philip Nazarella, Councilors Moises Rodriguez, who's the council president, and councilor at large, Councilor Jean Bradley Derrencourt. Uh, both Jean and Moses uh, sponsored this ordinance. Councilors, I do have two letters that I have to read into the record in its entirety. One is from Bill Carpenter, mayor of the city of Brockton, and one is from John W. Crowley, chief of the Brockton Police Department. I'll read Mayor Carpenter's first. It's addressed to me, Councilor Robert Sullivan, Brockton Ordinance Committee Chairman. Dear Councilor Sullivan, in an unprecedented request, the city solicitor has been asked through your legislative council to submit language for, quote, an acceptable, unquote, version of the sanctuary city piece of legislation pending before the ordinance committee. That request follows a motion introduced by Councilor Farwell and supported by the committee on 4-3-2019 to seek my input and also request of the city solicitor to propose language that would be considered, quote, perhaps less of a legal challenge, unquote, as stated by your legislative council. Despite the fact that the motion requested a response within 14 calendar days, the inquiry was not received by the city solicitor until 5-1-2019. 28 days after the motion had passed. I would respectfully remind the committee that this legislation is a city council initiative, which therefore does not necessitate my appearance this Wednesday evening. We've achieved remarkable success in reversing the climb of crime through the full assistance and cooperation of every available federal agency. I refuse to abandon that unique approach to fighting crime now, adopting an alternative approach by shunning the cooperation of even one federal agency to give sanctuary to any illegal foreign national is an approach that I find unacceptable to the citizens of Brockton. Last sentence. Please perform your duties of placing on my desk what you believe is an acceptable, quote, sanctuary city unquote, ordinance, and I'll perform my duties of reviewing the same. Sincerely, Bill Carpenter, Mayor of the City of Brockton. Councilors, that's gonna be reflected and going to the minutes through, uh, through the committee. Next one is a letter from John W. Crowley, Chief uh, Police Department Officer of the Chief, dated May 8, 2019. Members of the Ordinance Committee, City Hall, 45 School Street, Brockton, Mass, 02302. Dear members of the Ordinance Committee, as you are aware, I have again been invited to appear before the committee regarding the issue of, quote, <clears throat> Brockton United, unquote. I have no idea the purpose of my invitation and no information was provided to me in advance. I took careful approach in presenting my previous statement to the committee during an earlier public hearing along with the district attorney and members of the law department. My position has not changed and in fact has become more solidified against this proposal in light of the indictment of a sitting district court judge. 
In addition, the recent apprehension of a Brazilian undocumented individual magnified the importance of close relationship with the Federal authorities. I cannot envision any language to the proposed ordinance which would give comfort to me or my department against legal liability. Any such language could only hinder the functions of the members of the police department. Accordingly, I respectfully de decline the invitation. Respectfully, John W. Crowley, Chief of Police. That, too, will be noted into the, uh, into the record. Mr. Chairman. Councilor uh, Farwell, please. Mr. Chairman, if I could, I'd like to just uh, spend a couple of minutes on uh, the letter from the mayor. And I, I will admit from the outset, I probably am a bit more vocal about mayoral issues because I've been privileged to hold both positions. But um, the, the righteous indignation in this letter about how we have somehow pulled the mayor into this issue um, I, I sometimes think it's like a TV soap opera. He's the one that raised this issue to the level of a state of the city address. He's the one that claimed that it was a sanctuary city ordinance, and it wasn't. All of you know me. Some of these people in the audience may not know me. Some may. If this had been a sanctuary city ordinance, you know that I'm no shrinking violet. I would have been speaking about it. I would have been opposed to it. I viewed this as a dialogue and an ordinance that was aimed at solidifying what the police department currently does and was that going to continue. And I got a text message over the weekend from an officer who said he'd made thousands of arrests and he never asked someone's citizenship, whether they're here legally or illegally, and it has no bearing on how he conducts his work. So, if the mayor raises this ordinance, which hadn't even made it out of this committee to the level of a state of the city issue, and decides to stand up and comment on it, and decides to use it as a political weapon against Councillor Durenincourt, whom he perceives as a political opponent, I know silly things will happen between now and November. I've been around long enough, but that's just inappropriate. And to ask him to come in so that we can have a dialogue I don't think was out of the ordinary. I would have asked him, do you favor continuing the police department ordinance? Are you comfortable with it? Can it be improved upon? Do you think there's anything the community can do to foster better relationships with all segments of the community? It wasn't a trap. It wasn't anything that nefarious on our part. It was a genuine outreach to someone who certainly commented when we were doing the marijuana ordinance. We weren't moving fast enough. He offered amendments to it. Uh, you were the poster child for delay, 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 Mr. Chairman. So I regret he's not here. I think it was an opportunity to take an issue that has been raised really to a very high level of anxiety among a lot of people uh, by using the word sanctuary, words sanctuary city when it wasn't. And it, it's just too bad because I, I would hope that when we do have an issue like this that really permeates the entire community, we would listen to the mayor, whomever he or she is. And as far as involving the city solicitor, I've known Solicitor Nesralla for well, probably 35 years, both when we were young and foolish. And uh, having him involved in matters that we do in, in terms of an ordinance, we don't want to pass something that might run against federal or state law. We want to cooperate with our legislative council and with the solicitor's office. So it's too bad the mayor's not here. Um, solicitor Nesralla is here. I, I assure you that you weren't invited for any reason other than there are some issues that arise where the collective minds and the collective comments of all can sometimes yield a better product. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. And, and, and I, do, uh, I do want to thank you for those comments. And, and talking about the marijuana, I mean, many of us sat on the ordinance and, and you know, we, we did our due diligence on that. I know it's not pertinent to what we're talking about tonight, but I'll gladly be the poster boy to protect the interests of the City of Brockton. So, you know, it is what it is. But let's move on to this matter. Any other councilors have? Councilor Mr. Chairman, um, on the motion. Um, well, first of all, thank you so much for giving me the time to talk about this. Um, given the fact that, you know, the mayor um, had the courage to actually send us a letter expressing his uh, dissatisfaction in regard to the Brockton United audience. And let's face it, Council Farrell couldn't possibly uh, say it better because it wasn't us that actually bring this issue out. It was the administration that actually called it out uh, March 28, uh, 2019, when he said that, 
Jean Bradley, the winning court, would like to turn Brockton into uh, his nonsense because I don't believe that none of us believe in this. And given the situation that we are dealing with and knowing when Farrell um, counsel Farrell pretty well, I don't believe he would actually think about this if he knew this was a sanctuary city ordinance. I don't think Council Farrell would actually think about this. What was so sad is that recently uh, I saw a post uh, on Facebook uh, <coughs> saying that Council Farrell pledged uh, to bring undocumented people in this city. So um, as somebody who co-sponsored this in collaboration with uh, Council President Moses Rodriguez, I know each one of you. And I know that each one of you truly believe in doing what you think is best for the city. And I'm not going to let this administration make people think that all of us want to turn Brockton into a sanctuary city. Because the thing is that this piece of legislation has no language whatsoever that has to do with this. Well, obviously, we do have uh, some different ideology when it's come down to applying rules in the city. But all of us believe in doing what we think is best for this city. And for this administration to portray us as the bad guy. I hope folks out there took notice of that because I'm sick and tired of using a platform like the, uh, the, the state of the city's address where the administration did have the power to unite us, but use it as an opportunity to call me out. So if people don't know this, I'm gonna say it publicly because the folks you see here, we may be on a different pages, but we believe in doing what we think is best for the city. And for the administration, especially the gentleman who's in charge of it, does not have the courage, does not have the backbone to come and talk to us about his views. And I said it on the news, on the enterprise, this is shallow, it is pathetic, and it is unacceptable. Because if you have the ability to sit down and draft a letter, you should be able to come here and do this. Because the things that most people that I talk to believe that you guys are against helping the resident of Brockton. I know that that's not your view. What we are against is, all of us are against bringing criminals here. All of us are against bringing murders And not even one of us think about stuff like that. But the thing out there is that us, especially Council Farwell, myself, and Council Sullivan, we are being portrayed as the bad guy. Because we do have some very different ideology. I'm not gonna leave Council Cruz and Council Mullion, but day one, we've been putting under scrutiny due to the fact that we had the courage to fight this, yes. Council Moses Rodriguez filed this ordinance and I co-sponsor it because we believe in keeping this place safe. And we said it perfectly. Maybe what I've learned in school was bad. What I, taught, what I was told in criminal justice class was that in order for you to solve crime, you got to be able to make people believe in you. Because if somebody doesn't trust you, they will not give you the information that you need in order for you to do the, investiga the investigation that you so desperately need. Because there's a saying in Massachusetts is that if you see something, say something. Given what we are dealing right now, let's say that something stupid is going on. Let's just be honest here. Do you guys believe somebody will come out, report someone who's being abused, or do we believe somebody will come out and report a wrongdoing, especially if this person is undocumented? And when we are talking about undocumented, let's just wait for a moment. Even the folks who have green cards are unwilling to come out because they believe they themselves too can be deported. But I'm not going to sit here and let politics make us look like bad people. Because I know every single one of you folks believe in doing what you think is best for this place. So now is the moment as a body to stand up for what we believe. But I hope the administration, or I hope the person who's in charge of this administration came here tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank I appreciate you. your time. Thank you, Councilor Lodge. Mr. Monaghan, Mr. Cruz, anything? No. No? Legislative Council? Do you have any, uh, anything to, to offer at this time or no? Um, no, nothing other than I did do what I was tasked to do um, as far as trying to propose language. Um, I've provided to you not what I think is lawful language, but is the only language um, that, in my opinion, responded to the request. Um, I don't recommend passage from what I put in front of you because what is there is strictly language of policy. It has no enforcement. Um, ordinances in the city of Brockton um, should be enforceable. Uh, that's not the purpose of an ordinance. It's not to reiterate policy. It, it, it's to have weight and authority within the city. Um, so my draft admittedly is only policy because I thought the enforcement language was in conflict with um, federal law, which I've, I've already provided you my, my opinion on that. Um, 
So I don't want you to be confused that what's in front of you is something that I would suggest recommend a favorable vote on. Um, but just to show you that um, the only language that I could support is policy language, but that defeats the purpose of a city ordinance. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Resnick. And I, I do want to thank Attorney uh, Nazarella, Phil Nazarella, city solicitor, for being here tonight. Thank you, Phil, for being here. It means a lot to the committee. Um, Phil and I did, did discuss this issue for a while, too. So his, his office was, was involved in, in responding to the, to the council's request. Um, so we did have that conversation. And just for those watching and those here tonight, um, our legislative council, under the charter, we have our own attorney. Uh, Shannon Resnick is our attorney, meaning our city council attorney. Of course, um, Phil Nazarello is a city solicitor, and he has other attorneys that work for him, assistant city solicitors. But there is always a good working professional relationship, much like last year when we were vetting out the marijuana, and then again this year. So we're very fortunate to have good legal counsel, so thank you. And I don't just say that because I'm a lawyer. I mean it. Um, <laughs> counselors, matter comes before us. Oh, yes. <laughs> does, does, uh, Mr. Chairman, does Council Rodriguez wish to speak? Council President, you would you like to? Sure. Please. Good evening, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, good evening, members of the committee. Maybe I should turn this thing around. Yeah. So we can. Uh, Ooh, uh -oh, not they're going to get you good side, Moses. So that's, yeah, what yeah, you, do? you know. <laughs> good luck with that. Yeah, that's going to that's gonna Me too. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, as you know, I'm, um, I was the uh, sponsor of this ordinance. Um, as someone that actually uh, was an immigrant to this country, I was actually just looking at the podium in front of my little uh, area there, you can see the United States Navy flag. Uh, someone who immigrated to this country and served, li and, and served this country proudly. Uh, the reason why that flag is up there, it just sh shows you the pride that I have for this country. Uh, but recently, uh, immigrants have been played, uh, we're playing this, this funny game with, uh, with immigrants in this country uh, to a point where we're asked to, uh, to constantly pay the American dream taxes. Not necessarily to pay for the American dream, but a taxation on top of it. We're always asked to, I mean, it happens to me on a regular basis. Uh, you hear people saying, or oh, are you unpatriotic because you're pushing this, or you're pushing that, not realizing that the history behind my own being, actually, I think I've done uh, what I've done to protect this country that I love. But at the same time, it seems that we're constantly being questioned uh, in terms of expressing our patriotism in this country. And it's, it, it wasn't asked of other immigrant groups, uh, but recently it's been asked of the newer, slightly darker immigrant groups. And that's, a, that's sad and unrealistic for a country that was created by immigrants. Now, the reason why I'm saying that is because uh, our mayor has done a disservice to this community. Uh, him and I, I consider that we have a working relationship. We're not friends, as friends would be. Uh, please, audience, please, please, let's be professional, please. You know, I, I, the reason why I have a, a, an issue with what is being done or said is because, again, as Council Fowell was saying, I too am against Sanctuary City, totally against it. I believe it protects uh, criminal people, uh, people that shouldn't be protected, and if that was in one iota what I thought would be a Sanctuary City status, I would have never sp sponsored or supported this. The reason why I, I supported this is because when you work with the police department and you work with the community and you see the disconnect that exists between the two, in a lot of this community, we have a lot of immigrant people who are afraid of coming forward and subjecting themselves to discussions with law enforcement. So we thought that it would make sense in a city like this to pass some sort of an ordinance to ease those stresses. And that's what this thing was all about. It was not about protecting a Brazilian criminal 
because if you sit down and think about it, ICE actually came to Brockton to seek out that Brazilian criminal. So even if you had the, the laws in the book, it wouldn't have prevented ICE from coming down and doing their jobs. Because this law has nothing to do with that. This law does not protect criminal immigrants. What it does do is take the stresses that exist between the immigrant community and the police department. Uh, you know, frankly, um, as you were reading that letter from the chief of police, I, I, I was thinking, and I got think to think about the fact that the only reason why that police, the police chief is against this particular ordinance is because the mayor is against it. And I tell you that with a certain certainty because a lot of the men and women in the police department constantly ask for us to come up with ways so that they could work closely with the community. I had detectives that have said to me, I go to a crime scene, I know some people saw something, but they choose to stay in the dark because they're petrified of communicating with the police. So that's what we'll try to do. So if we're sitting here and being serious about public safety, to me, where you hear people saying, we want all the tools in our belt to work in terms of solving crime, this ordinance was one more tool that they're actually throwing out or being against. Because if this is, this is an opportunity for people to come forward and help provide information to the police that helps the police do their job, why would you turn that away? Why would you turn that away if you are truly for public safety? Now, the sad thing is, is that we have made um, a political football out of this particular thing, not realizing that we've got a lot of people in this community that are sleeping petrified because of what goes on in this community because they don't have the security to know that they can go to work, come back and do the right thing and that they too can enjoy the American dream. Because with all, with all due respect, the issue is not necessarily with those undocumented people. As I said before, the issue is with green card carrying individuals who are petrified of getting involved because once they go into Boston to get their citizenship papers, they will be asked the questions like, have you been involved with the police or law enforcement? If they say no, they're lying. One reason why they don't get their citizenship. If they say yes, then an, a page is open to say, at what level were you involved with the police and the law? So people are saying, you know what, I don't want to put myself in that situation because I don't want to have to explain, yeah, I was a witness to a drug deal. I was a witness to a particular crime because it opens up a can of worms that they might not be able to close. And that's why we'll try to pass this ordinance. Again, not to use it as, as political football, not to use it as a way of getting those illegal people to, uh, to vote for us because they don't vote, they can't vote. But it was, a, it was a matter of doing the right thing in a community that's a community of immigrants. When you sit down and talk to people, look at this ordinance. Tell me where does it say that the Brockton police cannot work with federal law enforcement agencies? Nowhere it says that. As a matter of fact, I just, we added a, a, a line to it that says, this does not say that the Brockton police cannot work with with law enforcement agencies. So the, uh, the individuals that are against this, I even go as far as the, the, the solicitor, it's because the mayor is against it. If the mayor is against it, if the mayor was for it, they would find a way of kind of supporting it. But because the mayor is against it, they have to figure out a way to be against it. And that's a shame. That's a shame because instead of unifying this community, we are dividing this community. And again, this is from somebody that's just as an American as anybody that's in this room, as somebody that wore the uniform to defend this country. And I'll continue to defend this country, which has nothing to do with what we're trying to do here. Thank you very much. Mr. President, we want to thank you, and thank you for your service. Yeah, just for a minute. Councilor. Uh, Mr. Chairman, on the motion. Um, there is no motion on the motion. Oh. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Um, recently, I got a call from a 78 years old uh, calling me about um, 9 o'clock p.m. And the first question that he asked me was that, 
are you for bringing criminals in Brockton? Or are you for bringing murder in Brockton? And I politely ask, you know, the gentleman, where did you find this information? And he personally told me that somebody from City Hall called him and asked him to call me and let me know that as long as I'm for Sanctuary City, I should leave Brockton. So uh, I was kind of like very open-minded about it, giving the gentleman age, but I was very hurt, giving the fact that I know this piece of legislation has nothing to do with what he was talking about. But I told him that I appreciate the fact that he called me, and I will definitely take his advice, and I'll make it in consideration. But here's what I would like to say to that. I got a few emails and texts and all kind of nonsense on Facebook about why can't the folks who are undocumented become documented? But for those of you who are watching live, it's not an easy process. And I said it all the time. I strongly believe that every single person who is undocumented in this country would like to be documented. Every single one of them. And the paramount goal of this ordinance is not to talk about whether or not the Brockton City Council will give green card or uh, citizenship to folks. It is all about bringing a sense of safetyness in our community. Because as we speak, we have people who are facing domestic violence who are unwilling to come out. I myself personally are part of a task force that was created by the DA, Cruz, to talk about what are the ways in which we can possibly talk to people to come forward to talk about stuff that is going on in their life. The DA stated that when he was when he came here like recently about a case that he was trying to fix and they know who did the, 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 the crime but the person is unwilling to talk to them because they are fear of deportation or whatever you want to call it. But for this administration to portray this issue as a, a sanctuary issue, it's nothing more than a blatant lies. And I said it perfectly. If you drive on Belmont Street, you will see it for yourself. Stop Sanctuary City. For those of you who are in the audience who may not have an opportunity to read the language, I have a few copies that I would like to share with you. So you can come get it, that's fine. Yeah, that's okay, you can come. Mr. Pre Mr. Chairman, can I do that? Council, it has, to, it has to go through. Okay, so unfortunately the chairman, well I will give it to no, you maybe after that. It has to go that. through the clerk. That's pro Bait and switch, what are you talking about? There's a process in place, sir. Sir, it goes to the clerk, our attorney. Yeah, you want one? Go ahead, go up there. So, so the, 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 uh, Mr. Chairman, the, the animosity that I have been facing out there is more than unthinkable because I got people that I personally know believe that I want to turn Brooklyn into a sanctuary. So let me tell you this, folks. For eight years, I have been in this country, and for two years, I've been a U.S. citizen. I have done what I'm supposed to do. And uh, I am grateful to the city of Brockton because this place has been so good to me. And to have the courage to talk about myself as somebody that want to turn this place into a bad place, it's pretty unfortunate. But we all know what's going on with this. But I, what I would like you folks to understand is that for those of you who may not have an opportunity to talk to law enforcement, ask them what is one of the best ways in which you can talk to somebody in order for you to find the information that you need mm. to solve a problem. And they're going to tell you that if somebody doesn't trust you, they will not give you any information. And the paramount goal of this ordinance was to bring trust and confidence among our local residents and law enforcement. I myself got called from a few police officers asking me to do something that will make it easier for them to talk to people who are facing issues on the street. Well, if you don't believe it, I'm going to tell you this right now. Human trafficking has been a very dangerous issue for us. Domestic violence and so much more. We know this is going on in the city of Brockton because we are not only, we are not special because we are part of the United States. But what I will never accept is that is for this administration to portray this piece of legislation, which I strongly believe and proud to support, to make it look like a sanctuary city. They are using this as a political tactic to scare you from not taking the time to do your research and do what you're supposed to do as a decent, well-respected citizen. What I would like you folks to understand is that take some time, read it, because I strongly believe that if Council Farrell knew this piece of legislation was a sanctuary 
see the piece of legislation, he wouldn't even talk about it. I personally know if Bob Sullivan knew this was a sanctuary city ordinance, we wouldn't even talk about it. We do have differences, obviously. That's what we are having this discussion. And some people actually call me and ask me and saying thank you the fact that we have the courage to bring this on board. But what I would like you folks to understand is that in 2013, this administration supported this. And it was worse than that. In 2015, in 2017, when Moses approached me about this in regard to, or on behalf of the Brockton United, Moses and I said, as long as you can come up with language that will satisfy everybody in Brockton, we're not gonna support this. And they take the time, they sat down, they've done their research, and they bring this. Moses and I file it. Well, I said this all the time. Moses happened to be Cape Verdean, and I'm happy to be Haitian. I don't know about Moses, but no matter what's going on this evening, I will never and ever and ever forget where I came from. And unless you are a Native American person, somewhere, somehow, you had somebody that come from somewhere else. Because the reason is that Because when we are talking about Chairman's going to speak right now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman's going to speak. Ladies and gentlemen, there has to be decorum and professionalism. People are against it, people are for it, but it's about being right now Brocktonians and listening and having respect. We just have to. Excuse me, excuse me. Let's just continue the process, please. Thank you for telling me to go ahead. I appreciate that. Thank you. Go Thank ahead. you. And it's so unfortunate for somebody who's been dedicated his life for more than 13 years to serve you folks way before I came in this country and to witness this. Let me tell you this, sir. Let's not take politics as a wedge to divide us. This is one city. All of us, the 11 of us, are fighting for the beautification of Brockton. Every single one of us believe in this place. It's hurt me as I speak, as I'm speaking right now, to witness you folks talking to someone like Bob Sullivan, who've been working so hard on your behalf, on my behalf, on our children's behalf, on our city's behalf, to talk to calling him a politician. But let's face it, you voted for us to do the job. We work for you, sir. We are doing what you voted us for. for you, we are doing what you voted us to do. And like I said, you will have an opportunity yourself to read this. And you know what's so funny? Yes, this is English. This is not French. This is not Haitian Creole. This is not Cavardian Creole. You will be able to read it on your own and have your own understanding. But let me tell you this to all of you. This piece of legislation is not a sanctuary city ordinance. The administration called it out solely because they knew what was going to happen. And the question you gotta ask, how come I, only, I was the only person that was called out when I was not even the main co-sponsor of that? Moses, my brother over there, and like I said, who happened to be Cavardian, and I myself who happened to be Haitians. So what I would like you folks to understand is that no matter how this go tonight, I will vote in favor of it. And yes, you as a, you, you as a citizen, you have the power to determine where you wanna go. So from now on, what I can tell you, sir, I would like you to have not only a trust in us, whom you voted for, but also give us the opportunity to do your job. Because you know what? We will not stand up for injustice. We will not stand up for inequality. We will stand up for everybody. Yes, immigration is not a local issue. We understand that. And immigration is not a state issue. We understand that. Congress has to do their job. But at the same time, we as a locality, do have the power to come up with regulation that we believe will help all of us. That's why we are here. You are facing us every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month. We work for you. We have access to us more than you have access to people at the State House, more you have access from people in Washington, D.C. You can call us at any time that you want to. We are doing what you want us to do. And every single one of us believe in doing what we want to do for this city because we love this place more than you can imagine. Do not let this administration fool you with that piece of legislation. The question we got to ask, when we call upon this administration to come and testify, and we got to why they don't believe in it, how come they never show up? 
yes, we send them a recommendation to actually explain or at least put onto what they would like to see. Well, according to what you just heard, nothing yet. So now they, are, they would like to make you believe that we want to turn this place into a bad place. Sir, let me tell you this again. I am proud of this city. I am proud of this place more than you can imagine. I will always be grateful to Brockton. I will be the last person that will encourage criminals, murder, rapists to come here. I will be the first person that will take this mic and call those people out. You can bet on that. And you can bet not only on myself, you can bet on Bob Sullivan, you can bet on Tim Cruz, you can bet on Monihan, you can bet on Win Fowell, and you can bet on Moses, or you can bet on all of us. We may be on different pages, but it doesn't mean we don't care about this place. But tonight, you witness this. You can ask me questions, and I'll be more than happy after this meeting to talk to you. I would listen to you, because I work for you. I am your employee. The people is my boss. The question you got to ask, who is the boss of this administration? Well, make, do your own research. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Councillors, just to explain the process of a subcommittee meeting, um, everything has to go through our attorney, who is the clerk of this committee. So paperwork, council misspoke, it has to go. That's Robert's rules. That's what we follow here in the city of Brockton. So if anybody in the audience wants anything, it has to go through Attorney Resnick as clerk of the subcommittee, to be clear on that. Councilor spoke. Any other councilors? Councilor Farwell, please. Mr. Chairman, I, I'd like to just close with what I hope is something positive. Um, I want to reflect back on what the district attorney said and what the police chief said. Uh, and we can't control federal officials from any federal agency. But if my memory serves, both of those individuals said that their respective agencies or departments render support and assistance regardless of where you're from, regardless of your national origin. There are no questions asked about how long have you been here, are you here legally or illegally. So in my view, I don't want to interfere with day-to-day -day police operations or policies. Um, I would suggest there's an opportunity here for the police department to do some outreach to the different communities and let them know that's how we operate. I don't think most people realize that, that if you call the police, if you go down there, you're not going to be looked at any differently than anyone else and no one's going to question your citizenship or run your, your name in a computer to find out if you're a resident or not. So there, there's, there's an opportunity here to do some good. But for my part, sitting here, particularly after hearing our legislative council, I can't, I can't get involved in the day-to-day -day operation of the police department. I, I just can't do it. I don't think that's our role. And it appears, from what the officers tell me, that this chief and other chiefs have stayed away from the whole citizenship issue. And if you're a crime victim, if you witness a crime, if you seek assistance, they will help you in every way they can. Could someone from the federal government come in? Yes, they could. We can't control that, as I said earlier. So that's my position. You know how I like to be upfront about it. And, uh, and I thank you for listening. Thank you, Councilor Fowler. Councilor Cruz, please. Thank you. I didn't want to follow Councilor Derencourt. A great speech. And thank you. I understand the pain. And um, I am very disappointed in certain people in the city who Anybody who's read this, any reasonable person understands this is not a sanctuary city bill. You can call it what you want, but it's not a sanctuary city bill. It, it is the Trust Act. And there are many people talking about the arrest a week and a half or two weeks ago of the Brazilian. That would not have been affected by this ordinance if it was put in place as is. So fear mongering bothers me. It, and I don't like trying to divide everybody. However, Personally, I come down to one problem with the whole act, and we've kicked it around now for four or five meetings. Fifth, fifth meeting. S section three, subsection C, is really the whole gist of this whole act. And while it's, uh, we've been advised by the attorneys that we pay, now we've had other attorneys that are not, and I certainly respect their opinion, but we've been advised by the attorneys that, that work for the city our attorney and the, the attorney for the city government that it is in direct violation of federal law. 
I can't vote to put, put an ordinance in that puts, would put the police officers technically or possibly in the position to either break a local ordinance or break federal law. But also, I'm not going to vote for uh, something that I know to be in, in violation of federal law or in conflict with federal law. And if you take Section C out, this becomes nothing more than a, a public policy statement, which should not be codified as an ordinance. So as much as I understand the problem, and I wish our federal government would get off their tuchus and, and start to address the issue, because even though the, the person at the top of the federal government may be the, a fear monger, most of our government really knows there's an issue that we need to fix. But it's a federal issue. It's not something we can fix here in Brockton. With Section C in, I can't vote for it. And with Section C out of it, I won't vote for it because it's a, nothing but a public policy statement. I would certainly do a resolution at that point if people wanted to, but that not, does not have the, the, uh, the force of an ordinance. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to, to uh, support this, but I am, I am upset at the mayor and, and other people in the city who want to call this a, a sanctuary uh, city ordinance. It is not, and it hasn't been. It's, but with subsection C in there, I can't support it. So thank you. And thank you, Council Cruz. Thank you. Council Monaghan, please. Yes, and I want to say I concur with Councilor Cruz, but I just want to read what our Legislative Council has left in to the ordinance. As basically Councilor Cruz has said, this is basically a policy now, and as our Legislative Council has said, that an ordinance needs teeth and needs to be enforceable. But what he, she has left in is basically saying that the City of Brockton will equally enforce the law and serve the public without consideration of nationality, ethnicity, <laughs> or immigration status, citizenship, immigration status, lack of immigration documentation, national origin, race, and ethnicity shall have no bearing on an individual's treatment by employees or officers of the city of Brockton, agencies or departments. So it's a policy that we do now, that we should enforce, but as an ordinance, it's not going to pass muster. But we, I think all of us agree here that we agree that all of our uh, citizens should be treated equally, as I have just read. Basically, everything else has been taken out of, of here at the, of, the, uh, of the proposed ordinance. So I also have, uh, the last time this came about was the police chief has offered to go to churches, go to public forums to inform uh, the immigrant population, the citizens of the city of Bronx, and what exactly our policy is and how we enforce or not enforce it or not enforce it. So uh, I just want to put that out there, and uh, we have to take advice from our, le our legislative council, so I'm going to be along with Council Cruz on this, but uh, I think that's the way we have to go as a policy. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And councilors, um, uh, first of all, I want to thank, publicly thank uh, our Council President Moises Rodriguez and Councilor Large Jean. Bradley, they're in court. Um, to draft legislation takes a lot of time. Uh, it takes a lot of time. And uh, you know, you should all be applauded because you, you, you've dug in, you've done your due diligence. Um, we, as a committee, have invited citizens and residents to speak. The DA, Tim Cruz, spoke. Uh, Police Chief Crowley spoke. Um, we had uh, our attorney speak, the city attorney speak, both the assistant and the full-time city solicitor, ACLU, uh, two different individuals, uh, Attorney Rotolo spoke. Um, we've also invited the sheriff, Joe McDonald from Plymouth County, who didn't show, and the mayor uh, on two occasions who didn't show. Uh, and I think at the end of the day, I, what I have said is this. I'm from Brockton, right? Born and raised in the city of Brockton, Brockton High, right? But I'm an American citizen and an Irish citizen. I hold dual citizenship. So when my grandparents came here to work in the shoe factories, they did it because they tried to make a better life and leave, leave Ireland. Everybody that's here right now in the city of Brockton is, is let's not say everybody, I'd say 99.9% .9 of the people and those here tonight care about Brockton, right? You're here because you care about Brockton. You wouldn't have left dinner time and your family to come to City Hall if you didn't care. So you should all be applauded too. And when you get politics into the game, it always gets dicey, right? This piece of paper isn't a sanctuary city. We all know it. But I also said this. I've been privileged to serve 14 years as a counselor at large. Every two years when I've been reelected, I pledge to uphold the laws. When I was passing the bar and graduated from law school again, I have to uphold the laws. We have been told through the solicitor's office, Mr. Murphy, the assistant solicitor, and more importantly, our own attorney, that it just 
it, it doesn't pass the smell test relative to does it abide by the law or does it violate the law. So in good conscience, I, I can't pass this. I can't support this because it doesn't pass the law. And that's what we're all charged to do every two years, right? So, so I think at the end of the day, if it's a policy issue, it really has no merit to go on the books for an ordinance, okay? If it violates the law, I, I can't support it. We pay our attorney to give us advice. But what I think this, and I've said it the other day when we were here, we, we never have five meetings of a subcommittee unless we all know how important this issue is, right? We did it with marijuana, even though we got bashed by Carpenter, we did it for the right reasons, okay? We're doing this for the right reasons. If this passes tonight or doesn't pass, it goes to the full council. So whatever happens here, ladies and gentlemen, you know, it has to go to the full 11 members for a final vote. But what I do think this, and, and I think Mr. Cruz was, was accurate about this, if it doesn't go back favorable and it's unfavorable and ultimately it doesn't pass, we know that this issue is something that is vital to the residents of the city of Brockton. Put away the, the bogus idea of a sanctuary city. We're all Brocktonians, we all pay taxes, we're residents, what are we gonna do? How do we make sure that people feel good in the city of Brockton and trustworthy with the police? I think a resolution is going to be beneficial, but I think at the end of the day, it's having these meetings. The Council at Large, Gene, myself, Wynn, and Moses, we're having another Council at Large meeting coming up. It's going to be at Sullivan Tower. This is what we need to do. We need to take away the bogus idea of fear-mongering and pointing and all this BS and get to the gist of it. How do we make sure people feel safe in the city of Brockton, at their home, at their schools, and just walking downtown? And I think as elected officials, we're charged to do it. Now, I am also very dismayed that the CEO of the city of Brockton, Mr. Carpenter, doesn't show up. Mayor Belzotti did, Mayor Harrington did, Mayor Unit surely did. So on an issue this vital, he may say, do your job as legislators, but we can retort back, do your job as a mayor and come before the citizens who elect you. So at the end of the day, I'm not gonna support this, but I do think it's a step in the right direction and we need to continue this step. We can't just put it aside and say, oh, that was Jeans and Moses. We need to make sure that it's something that we as a council can say, you know what, we made a difference in 2019 and it's impacting people's lives. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Councilor. Thank you. Um, I mean, just say this like that. I'm 28 and um, February 11th, 2016, I took an oath to protect and defend uh, the Constitution of the United States as a U.S. citizen. And it's been two years since I've been doing everything that I could possibly do to defend it. And some of you, by virtue of your parents, uh, you were fortunate enough to be born in this country. And some of us, by virtue of the great nation of America, uh, we are able to apply and uh, get our citizenship. But let me just say this. Let's forget about the politics tonight. Let's just be human here. I will never, ever, ever forget where I came from no matter where I am and no matter what I do. Because the reason is being is that if you forget where you came from, you will never know where you're going. I know politics sometimes can be very nasty. I know politics sometimes can be very divisive. But we as a collective society do have a solemn obligation not just to talk, but also to act accordingly. We as the city of Champion, we should be able to stand up for what we believe in and grow some backbones and put our money where our mouth is. And I could not be more proud of my colleagues for taking the time to actually bring this issue to life so we can have an open discussion. But I, what I'm so sorry is the fact that you folks, especially those of you who are watching right now, has been misleading with this administration to make you believe that us want to turn this place into a sanctuary city. You heard it from Council Farrell, this is not a sanctuary city. You heard it from Council Monaghan, this was not a sanctuary city. You heard it from Council Cruz, this was not, and also from Council Sullivan. But here's what I'm gonna say tonight. This might be the last time that I'll be able to speak on this issue on this ordinance committee. But here's what I would like you folks to understand that. I wasn't doing this for me, for my family. I was doing this for my children. I was doing this for the safetyness of our city, and I was doing it for the benefits of Brockton. Yes, I said it many times. Moses and myself happened to be born in two different places. Yes, he was born in Cape Verde, and I was born in Haiti. 
the beauty of America is our ability to, to work together and to live together as one collective society. As you know, according to the US Constitution, this is a nation of immigrants. One thing that I always say is that, and I'm not gonna talk too much about this because I know how this is gonna go tonight, but here's what I would like you to understand. When the British came in this country, the question you gotta ask, did they come legally or something else? When the British came in this country, took over this land, the 13 colonies, well at the beginning it was one and then two and then until they got to the 13th one, did they come legally? If your answer is yes, then some of you are not foreigners. But if the answer is no, every single one of us, unless you are a Native American, come from somewhere else. As we are debating this tonight, it is my distinguished privilege and honor to be here because as the first Haitian American elected official in Brockton and the first Haitian American male elected in the history of Massachusetts, you guys build that history. You were part of something big, regardless what happened to it. Because not too many people had the courage to even talk about it. But we did, and we know why we did it. But regardless what happened tonight, when you go home, think about what you've done to contribute to this city. And I know that we as colleagues, we're gonna go home with open mind. Because we know that every single one of us did what we have to do to bring this issue to life. Yes, Council Moses and myself have been portrayed as the two folks that want to turn this place into a bad place. And as I'm finished this, let me tell you this. You will see me again, and I will not be quiet until we do what we think is best for all of us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. I also, uh, I also uh, want to uh, recognize two councillors that are here as well, Susan Castro from Ward 4 and Ann Beauregard from Ward 5. Thank you for joining us, councillors. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Councillor Cruz, please. Uh, I'm going to make a motion to recommend this favorably, and just so the public knows, I am going to vote against it. Motions can only be made in a positive manner, so I'm going to motion. Motion on the floor. Is there a second? S second. There's a motion on the floor. It was properly seconded for a favorable recommend recommendation back to the full council. Uh, we could do a roll call vote. Sure. Um, Councillor Farwell? No. Mo Councillor Monaghan? No. Councillor Durancourt? Yes. Councillor Cruz? No. Councillor Sullivan? No. So the motion fails. So the motion fails. <laughs> Just going to do some procedure, please. So it goes back unfavorable to the full council, and then all 11 uh, will be able to vet it out at that time. Anything else before us? Make a motion to adjourn. There's a motion on the floor. Second. There's a motion to adjourn. It was properly <laughs> second. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. Have a good night. <laughs>